Good morning and welcome to Online Storytime. Yes, today is Friday, July 3rd, and no, the libraries are not doing curbside service today, but Miss Mary's still here doing online story time for you. So I hope you enjoy it today. And happy 4th of July. Remember to stay safe. Let's get started. Good morning. Oh, there's are some poor good mornings. Let's try that again. Good morning. Oh, I heard some better good mornings. Thank you. Let's begin with our song. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. All right, are we ready to hear a story? Give yourself a hand for your song. Y'all did very well. And how many is ready for a story? Oh, you are? We're gonna start the first story. It's called The Name of the Tree. And it's a Bantu folktale retold by Celia Barker Lotridge. And it's illustrated by Ian Wallace. What do you notice on the front of this book? Oh. You see an elephant, a giraffe, a gazelle, a tortoise. I see two tortoises. Very interesting. You see zebra stripes mm, and a tree. Well, let's find out. The name of the tree. What do you think the name of the tree is? Any guesses? Those are awesome, wonderful guesses. Let's find out. We're gonna read the story and find out. Once long ago in the land of the short grass, there was a great hunger. No rain fell and no grass grew. The ostrich, the gazelle, the giraffe, the monkey, the rabbit, the tortoise, the zebra, all other animals were hungry. They searched in the jungle. They searched by the river. They searched on the great flat plain, but they could find nothing to eat. At last, all the animals gathered together and they said, let's us go together across the great flat plain until we come to something we can eat. And so all the animals, except for the lion, who was king and lived in the jungle, walked across the flat, empty land. They walked and walked and walked. After many days, they saw a small bump on the edge of the flat land. What do you think that small bump was? Let's look and see. Uh, if you guessed it was a tree, you were absolutely right. Then they saw that the, the small bump was a tree, and the tree was very tall, and the tree had fruit on it, such fruit they had never seen before. It was as red as pomegranates, as yellow as bananas, as green as melons, as purple as plums, as orange as mangoes, and it smelled like all the fruits of the world. Look at all those fruits up there. Mmm. And they're down there. But the tree was so tall and the branches so high that even the giraffe couldn't reach the fruit. And the trunk was so smooth that even the monkey couldn't climb the tree. The animal sat on the ground and cried because the fruit smelled so good and they were so hungry. At last, when they were too tired to cry any longer, a very old turtle spoke. Oh, animals, she said, my great great grandmother told me a story about a wonderful tree. The fruit of that tree was as delicious and good to eat, but it could 
be reached only by those who knew the name of the tree. The animals cried all out, oh! But who can tell us the name of the tree? The very old tortoise answered, the king knows. We must send someone to ask him. Who do you think they're gonna send to ask the name of the tree? Let's see. See if your answer's right. I will go, said the gazelle. I am the fastest runner of all of us. And that was true. So the gale started out across the great flat plain. He ran like an arrow shot from a bow. And as he ran, he thought, how lucky the animals are that I am willing to go to the king. No one can run as fast as I. Indeed, it was not long before the gazelle reached the jungle and the place by the river where the king lived. Do you think the gazelle is going to get there in time? Let's see what happens. The king was sitting with his tail neatly wrapped around him. Every hair in his golden coat lay smooth and shining. He spoke kindly to the gazelle. What do you wish of me? He said. Oh, great king, said the gazelle. All the animals are hungry, and we have found a tree filled with wonderful fruit. But we cannot eat the fruit until we know the name of the tree. I will tell you, said the lion. But you must remember, for I don't want to have to tell anyone else, the name of the tree is Angali. Angali, said the gazelle. I will run as fast as the wind, and I will reach the tree before I can possibly forget. Do you think the gazelle's going to remember the name of the tree? Let's see. The gazelle thanked the king and began to run through the jungle and across the great flat plain. He thought about how happy all the animals would be and how they would thank him and be grateful to him. He thought about this so hard that he did not see a rabbit hole that lay in the path, not far from where the animals were waiting. He stepped in it and went head over hoofs over head over hoofs. He landed in a heap of, at the foot of the tree. What is the name of the tree? shouted the animals. The gazelle shook his head. He shook it again, but the name was gone. I can't remember. He whispered. The animals groaned. <clears throat> we will have to send someone else, they said. Someone who will not forget. Who do you think they're going to send this time? I will go, said the elephant. I never forget anything. The animals, animals nodded, for this was true. And so the elephant strode off across the great flat plain. I will not forget, she said to herself. I can remember anything I choose to, even the names of all my cousins. The elephant had hundreds of cousins. Or the names of all the stars in the sky. Do you think the elephant's going to remember? Let's see. When the elephant arrived at the edge of the river, the king was sitting in his usual place. But the end of his tail was twitching and his fur was ruffled. What do you want? He growled. Arr. Can you growl like a lion? Arr. Oh, king, said the elephant. All the animals are hungry. I know, said the king. And you want to know the name of the tree with a wonderful fruit. I will tell you, but don't for you forget, because I absolutely will not tell anyone else. The name of the tree is Ungali. I will not forget said the elephant hauntingly. I never forget anything. And she turned and began to make her way out of the jungle. Do you think the elephant's gonna remember the name? We sent the gazelle. The gazelle didn't remember. What about the elephant who never forgets? Forget, she grumbled to herself. Me forget? 
why I can remember the names of all the trees in this jungle. And she began to name them. When she had finished the jungle trees, she went on to all the other trees in Africa. She was just starting on the trees of the rest of the world when she happened to step in the very rabbit hole that had tripped up the gazelle. Her foot fitted exactly into the hole, so exactly that she couldn't get it out. The animals waiting under the tree saw the elephant and ran toward her calling. What is the name of the tree? What is the name of the tree? The elephant pulled and tugged and pulled and tugged. And at last, with great pop, her foot came out of the hole. I can't remember, she said crossly. And I don't care. That tree has caused far too much trouble already. The animals didn't even groan. They were too tired and too hungry. After a long time, a very young tortoise spoke. Oh, animals, he said, I will go and find out the name of the tree. You, said the animals, but you are so young and you are so small and you are so slow. Yes, said the very young tortoise, but I know how to remember. I learned from my great, great, great grandmother, the one who told you about the tree. Do you think the tortoise is gonna remember? The animals had nothing to say and the little tortoise was already on his way. It is true that he was slow but by putting one short leg ahead of the other, he crossed the great flat plain, went through the jungle, and arrived at the place by the river where the king lived. And the turtle is going, do you think the turtle is going to remember? Now we've sent the gazelle, we've sent the elephant, and now we're sending the tortoise. Do you think it's going to remember? Let's see what happens. The king was not sitting in his usual place. He was pacing up and down the bank of the river, waving his tail. His fur was standing on end. When he saw the very young tortoise, he roared, Roar! Can you roar with me? Roar! If you have come to ask me the name of the tree, go home. I have told the gazelle and I have told the elephant that the name of the tree is Ungali, and I will not tell you. The very young tortoise nodded his head politely. He turned and began to walk out of the jungle. Now he said he wasn't gonna tell the name of the tree, but didn't he just tell it? As he walked, he said, Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali, Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. And he went on saying it as he crossed the great flat plain. Can you say it with me? We're going to say it twice. Ready? One, two, three. Ungali. Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. Say it again with me. Ungali. Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. And he never stopped saying it even when he got tired. Even when he got thirsty. Because that is what... his great-great-grandmother had told him to do. Even when he fell right to the bottom of that same rabbit hole, the very young tortoise just climbed out saying, ready to say it? We're going to say it twice. Ungali, Ungali, the name of the tree is Ungali. Ungali, Ungali, the name of the tree is Ungali. None of the animals saw him coming. They were sitting under the tree, looking at the ground. The very young tortoise walked straight up to the foot of the tree and said in a loud voice, The name of the tree is Ungali. At the count of three, I want you to say that with me. One, two, three. The name of the tree is Ungali. The animals looked up. They saw the branches of the tree bend down so low 
that they could reach the wonderful fruit that was red as pomegranates, as yellow as bananas, as green as melons, as purple as plums, and as orange as mangoes, and smelled like all the fruits of the world. So now they're able to eat. The animals ate. They ate until they could eat no more. And they, and then they lifted the, the very young tortoise high in the air and marched around the tree chanting, Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. Can you say that two more times with me? Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. Ungali, Ungali. The name of the tree is Ungali. Because they did not want to forget, and they never did. And that is the that's the end of the name of the tree. So we learn in this book that the gazelle is fast, but he can't remember. The elephant is a little bit slower, but has a memory that you never can forget. But when they get to that rabbit hole, they step in and they seem to forget. But the tortoise remembered what his great great grandmother told him. And remember, what was the name of the tree? Anybody? Can you tell me? If you said Ungali, you're right. How did the tortoise remember the name of the tree? That's right, he repeated it. Ungali, Ungali. Ungali is the name of the tree. Ungali. Very good. I'm so glad I have such good listeners today. We, I have another book for you. It's called How. The ostrich got its long neck. It's retold by Berna Adderme, and it's illustrated by Mar Marcia Brown, one of my favorite illustrators, and, and she also writes books too. How the ostrich got its name, got its long neck. And it's a tale told from the Alcama of Kenya. Long, long ago, when the earth was set down and the sky was lifted up, the ostrich had a short neck. It was most inconvenient, for he had to sit down to catch insects on the ground, and he could not reach the berries that were high on the bushes. Also, when he went to the river, he had to spread his legs wide apart in order to take a drink. But there was a crocodile in that river. And one morning, when the clouds were still pink from the sunrise, crocodile woke up with a terrible toothache. Crocodile swam swiftly down the river looking for help. Her tears dripping into the water with tiny splashes. Tuh. Ta, ta. Soon, Crocodile saw a kudu at the river's edge, laughing. Loop, loop, loop. Crocodile called, Hiya, kudu. Will you take a look at my teeth? I have terrible toothache, and maybe you can pry out the bad tooth with one of your long, twisted horns. Fish Eagle, who was circling above the river, cried, Kawark, Kawark! Don't do it, don't do it! At first, Kawark, ducks who were feeding on the shallow side of the river, skittered across the water flapping. Kink, 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 kink! To get airborne. Parrots, hornbills, and finches in the nearby trees flew off too, and the kudu galloped away. Kaploop to, kaploop to, kaploop to. Why do you think they're running instead of helping him? Farther on, Crocodile saw a baboon with a baby on her back, bending over to the water's edge. Crocodile called, Hiya, Mama Baboon! Will you take a look at my teeth? 
I have a terrible toothache. And maybe you could dig out the bad tooth with your sharp claws. Fish Eagle, who had followed Crocodile, called, Quark, quark, don't do it, don't do it. Can you say that with me? Quark, quark, don't do it, don't do it. Mama Baboon ran off Zavak de Lock with her tail curled over her back and the baby clinging to her with all his baby strength. Crocodile swam on, her tears dripping into the water with tiny splashes. Tee-hee, tee-hee, tee-hee. Farther on, it happened that the short-necked ostrich was drinking by the edge of the river. Crocodile called, Hiya, ostrich, will you take a look at my teeth? I have a terrible toothache, and I'm sure you could pull out the bad one with your strong beak. Ostrich backed away. He wanted nothing to do with the, a crocodile. Please help me, begged Crocodile. I won't hurt you. Ostrich moved a little closer. Crocodile paddled to the water's edge and opened her big mouth. A shiver of fear ruffled Ostrich's fluffy coat. Fish Eagle called down. Kawark, kawark, don't do it, don't do it. Your turn. Kawark, kawark, don't do it, don't do it. Great job. Ostrich backed farther away. Crocodile cried harder than before. Oh! This awkward pity in Ostrich's heart, and he cautiously inched his way back to Crocodile. And again, Crocodile opened her mouth. Ostrich began tapping one tooth after another. Tick, tick. Tick, tick. Is this the one that hurts? He would ask. Is this the one? Each time Crocodile said, uh, 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 uh. The big bird's head went down into Crocodile's mouth. Suddenly, Crocodile remembered that she hadn't ha she'd had no breakfast. She clamped her jaws down. Come back! Trapping Ostrich's head. Let me out! cried Ostrich in her muffled voice. Let me out! Elephant was bathing nearby. Eek! He squealed. Crocodile is pulling Ostrich's head off. Fish Eagle called from above. Pull! Ostrich, pull! Can you say it? Pull! Ostrich, pull! Ostrich planted his big feet in the sod on the riverbank and pulled. He pulled and pulled and pulled. Crocodile pulled too, but in the opposite direction. Ostrich backed up, but Crocodile did not budge. And as Ostrich backed away, his neck stretched longer and longer and longer. Ostrich dragged the big Crocodile right out of the water. The hot sun beat down on Crocodile's back and made her tooth hurt worse than before. When Crocodile finally opened her mouth to say, Put me back in the water, Ostrich escaped. He ran a little way, then he stopped. Something was not right. The ground seemed much farther away, but he could reach it easily. And the berries high on the nearby bush were right within his reach. What was different? Ostrich wondered, and then he knew his neck had become very, become long, very, very long. He flapped his wings in delight. Then he strutted off with his head held high. To peek, to peek, to peek. Can you say that with me? To peek, to peek, to peek. And since that time, ostriches have stayed in the bush, far from the river. For now, even the youngest ostrich knows better than to trust a hungry crocodile. And that is the end of how the ostrich got its long neck. So how did the ostrich get its long neck? Well, it, the crocodile, remember, asked for it to 
has several different animals to help him, but they refuse to help him. So the ostrich finally felt sorry for him and helped him out. Now these books will be ready Monday. You can check them out, the name of that tree or how the ostrich got its name. For now, let's do our goodbye song. And remember, it's not goodbye, because Miss Mary will be back next week. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. But you can find us live on Facebook, and it's slashback MCCPL louder. You can also find us on YouTube, because the videos are later put on YouTube, and you're able, you're, you'll be able to find us there. Now, if you're looking for a playlist on Facebook, um, all the story times are under story time, all the lap sits are under lap sit, all the summer reading are under summer reading, and we're working on putting the young adults in the young adult category. And we have finished Pay Attention, Carter Jones at four o'clock. Now we're reading Allie Cross, which is Alex Cross's son. And that's by James Patterson. It's our brand new book that Louder has received. And I'm excited to read it and introduce it to you. If you have any questions, you can call us at 334-625-4844. Just remember today, Saturday, I'm sorry, Friday, July 3rd, and we are not open today because due to Independence Day, which is celebrated on July 4th, which will be tomorrow, but we're closed July 3rd in celebration of it. Hope you have a safe and happy 4th of July. And remember, if you're using fireworks, be careful and, don't, and let an adult help you with them. And let them, after they have fallen to the ground, wait a little while, pour a little bit of water on them before you pick them up, and then put them in the trash can. But have a safe and happy 4th of July, and I look forward to seeing you next week. And Tuesday at 10 a.m. live, you get to go cooking, you get to cook with me. I'll give you some ideas for some summer fun, but you do not have to, that that won't, that you don't have to really cook. It's, it's all stuff that you've got at the house, just about. But I'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.